In just a few months from now, one of Microsoft's most popular versions of Windows will turn 20 years old. And today, we're going to look back on the launch of Windows XP, find out how it changed the face of computing for many of us, and explore using it in 2021. Is Windows XP still usable as a daily driver? And today's video is brought to you with my sponsor, Fast Hosts, who've actually let me write a question for their techie test. And if you're based in the UK and you know the answer, you've got the chance to win the ultimate work from home setup worth up to £5,000. Check the link in the description and I'll explain more later in this video. Released on Thursday, October 25th of 2001, Windows XP was a real revolution for both home and business users. In fact, it was the first version of Windows that persuaded me to switch over to it as my main operating system. And I still remember lining up in the rain early in the morning outside PC World to pick up my copy on launch day. Now, I had used Windows 98 for a couple of years part time, but XP just felt rock solid. Of course, being built on the Windows NT core that previously was only used in enterprise releases of Windows, it took all the best bits of Windows 2000 and brought them to the general market. But it wasn't all sunshine and roses. The release of Windows XP came off the back of a huge antitrust law case where the US government accused Microsoft of illegally maintaining a monopoly. And a fact that was reminded to Bill Gates during launch day interviews. I don't want to finally be the one on your big day to remind everyone of this, but in the courts, your company has been branded a bully. And with everything that's going on and the push for settlement, would it be a great time to apologise? You've got a great new product, you've got the Xbox coming out, your country's facing this conflict. Could Microsoft say, we've made big mistakes, we're sorry, we're settling tomorrow? Well, certainly Microsoft is very focused on, on settlement. Uh, we've tried many times before, but this time I'd say it, it has brighter prospects, and so we're putting a lot of energy into that. The case uh, went up on appeal, and most of it, including the, the language you're talking about, that was all reversed. Launched with a more understated event than the huge outdoor festival that was the Windows 95 launch several years earlier, the Windows XP launch was held in New York, just weeks after the September 11th attacks. And the calm nature of the event reflected the delicate mood of the nation, with a gospel choir opening the event singing a song called America the Beautiful, and Bill Gates being joined on stage by New York's then mayor, Giuliani. After the launch of Windows 98, it was reported that Microsoft was working on two brand new versions of Windows, one of them codenamed Odyssey, that was to be aimed at the business market, and one called Neptune, that was to be the first NT-based home release of Windows. But instead of focusing their efforts on two separate releases, it was announced at the start of 2000 that instead they would combine it into a single release, codenamed Windows Whistler, which then became Windows XP. And this did mean that we had several different editions of Windows XP available to purchase, with a Pro edition aimed at corporations and a home version for new PCs at home, and upgrade versions that were priced lower and could be used to update PCs already running Windows 98. And there was even a little used 64-bit release of Windows XP. And on the first boot of XP, it was a big departure from the look of previous versions of Windows. Gone were the smooth gradients of Windows 2000 and the subtle shading of Windows 98, and instead we had a very in-your-face visual style that was called Luna. And this was very divisive even at the time, with some people being fond of the blobby blue, white and green theme, and other people saying it looked childish, with some even branding it the Fisher-Price theme, named after the kids' toy manufacturer. And the other main part of the default look was the wallpaper that was titled Bliss and shows a beautiful image of a grassy green hill under a summery blue sky, taken in California's Napa Valley. Photographer Charles O'Rea apparently took this photo in the summer of 1996 when he was driving to his girlfriend's home and spotted this glorious hill by the side of the road. He pulled his car over to take the photo and since then it's become one of the most viewed images in the world. 
And Charles even claims that the wallpaper in Windows XP is virtually untouched and that it hadn't been manipulated or enhanced using something like Photoshop. Now, over the years, there have been various attempts to remake the picture in the same location, but nothing that looks quite as vibrant as the Bliss wallpaper. And if you didn't like the default look of Windows XP, there were various themes included with it, including the Windows Classic theme that made it look like Windows 2000 again, and various other themes were released over the years, including the popular Royale theme taken from the Windows XP Media Center edition, and my personal favorite, the Zoom theme, which was designed to promote Microsoft's ill-fated iPod competitor. The Start menu that was first introduced in Windows 95 received its first major change, switching to a two-column design and prioritizing recently used and pin programs with the full install list being moved to a submenu. The notification area hides inactive icons by default. And as LCD monitors were becoming more popular by 2001, Windows XP also included clear type technology that was designed to make fonts more readable on flat screen technologies. We also saw some big changes to Windows Explorer with new task and navigation panes and windows becoming more contextualized depending on the type of content that was contained within them. Windows XP search function was intended to be more user friendly and brought with it a series of Windows search companions that actually looked a bit like a hangover of the infamous Microsoft Bob. Yeah, most people turn those off. XP also offered roaming user profiles that could quickly be switched between and very useful if you had a family PC set up in the kitchen or the living room and wanted to keep your files, images and your internet history private. And of course, home media was becoming a big deal by the early 2000s and Windows XP was built to take advantage of it, bundling tools like Windows Movie Maker to enable users to quickly edit home videos. Windows Media Player 8 had new and improved codecs and adding Windows Media Connect added a UPnP based streaming media server inside Windows. And there was even a version of XP launched in 2005 intended for home media centers. Windows XP also included CD writing technology that was licensed from Roxio, which meant that users could write to their own CD-ROMs and later DVD-ROMs out of the box without having to install something like Nero. Windows XP also shipped with DirectX version 8.1 in its initial release, which gave some nice graphical improvements and made Windows an even better gaming platform. So just scratching the surface there, XP did bring a lot of improvements over Windows 98. But what about using it today in 2021? How much software still works on it today? And can we do any upgrades to make it even more viable? We'll have a look at all that next. And before we do that, it's time for your chance to win this incredible prize, the ultimate work from home setup worth up to £5,000. And it's all thanks to today's sponsor, our amazing friends at Fast Hosts. Now, they're a UK based web hosting company which offers a wide range of web hosting products and other services, including fast and affordable virtual private servers. And their VPS hosting gives you complete control over your server. With flexible, dedicated resources, you can adjust your server's RAM, CPU, and SSD storage whenever you need with the choice of operating systems for both Linux or Windows, and you can get started from just one pound a month. And check out their very affordable WordPress hosting, where you can easily build and manage your website on their lightning fast and reliable platform, easy to set up and optimize for performance and easily able to handle traffic spikes and available for just one pound per month for the first six months and comes with a free domain for the first year, as well as free mailboxes and free lifetime SSL. So to win your dream work from home setup worth up to £5,000, you just need to answer my techie test question. What was the code name of Windows XP? Was it A, Chicago, B, New York, or C, Whistler? To answer and win the work from home setup, just head to the link in this video's description. And a big thank you to Fasthost for sponsoring this video and good luck. So Windows XP stayed on the market for a lot longer than Microsoft originally intended. 
Its successor, Windows Longhorn, was supposed to be released just two years later in 2003, and you can check out my full video on Longhorn to hear more about that story. And when its eventual successor, Windows Vista, was released in 2007, it landed to a very poor reception. So many companies and users just stuck with Windows XP, meaning that Microsoft had to virtually drag them, kicking and screaming, off of XP onto Windows 7 by killing Windows XP off and ending extended support in April of 2014, over 12 years after the operating system was first released. And the embedded version of Windows XP was still receiving updates and support up until 2016. And there was even a patch released by Microsoft in 2019 to patch the WannaCry vulnerability. So Windows XP lasted a lot longer than Microsoft ever wanted it to, but using it in 2021 as your main operating system is obviously not recommended by Microsoft or really anyone who cares about security. But there are some ways to keep Windows XP running and keep it more relevant 20 years after it was first released. And believe it or not, there is still software supporting XP today. Now, of course, the main thing that we need to get anything done in 2021 is an up-to-date web browser. And there are operating systems like Chrome OS that today are essentially just a web browser. So if we can get a modern browser running on here, then really we are 90% of the way there. And of course, the mainstream browsers like Chrome, IE and Firefox all abandoned XP inside the last decade. But there are still two active web browsers that are in development that I could find for Windows XP. One is called Kmelion and the one that I'll show here, MyPal. Now, this is based on the Pale Moon browser, which itself is based on Firefox. And the aim of this project is to provide a current, secure and reliable web browser that works on Windows XP. And actually, it works pretty well. In here, we have access to websites using modern security protocols and things that you'd use in day to day work life seem to run just fine in here. As you can see, I can use Google Docs and that runs completely fine as you'd expect. Your social media sites work in here as well. And I've often found in my operating system test videos, the biggest test of a browser on an old operating system is usually media streaming, but even YouTube is working really well in here. So in terms of having a modern web browser that will do your daily tasks, my pal does really make Windows XP useful again. And of course, if you are connecting your Windows XP machine to the internet, security is always going to be a concern. There are some people who claim the minute you connect a Windows XP machine to the internet, you're going to get a virus or it's going to be compromised in some way. But there are a couple of ways to improve on Windows XP security somewhat. Now, first of all, we can download the unofficial Service Pack 4 from MajorGeeks.com, which rolls up all of the Service Pack 2 and 3 updates and the ones from Microsoft that came after that and some additional enhancements and fixes to take it up to 2016. And there are still a couple of antivirus suites that support and protect Windows XP. One that I found that seems to work well is Avast, the free version of this, which although lacking some of the features that you'd find in the newer Windows 10 version, it still protects XP from all the latest threats that it knows of. And something that many people need to get their daily work done is, of course, a fully featured office suite. An Apache OpenOffice 4.1.10, which is the latest version at the time of recording this video, still fully supports Windows XP and actually claims to work with Windows 2000 as well. And of course, it's compatible with the standard Microsoft Office formats. And for doing your daily document writing and spreadsheets and handling, you've got everything you need in here. And there are even guides on places like Reddit on getting things like Steam working on Windows XP. But from what I've seen, it is quite a hassle. And even when you do get it working, not many games tend to work with it. So really, if you're a gamer, you're better off for sticking to games from XP Zero. And there is still an old Spotify client for Windows XP that somewhat works with a few missing features. But really, the best way to use Spotify is via the website, which actually still works completely fine in the MyPal browser. So 20 years after the release of Windows XP, it still remains one of the most fondly remembered versions of Windows. And during its unexpectedly long life, it started out as an operating system that did a lot to improve over Windows 98. And then as the decade went on, it became so ingrained into a lot of our lives that people were very reluctant to leave it behind. And of course, the major bump in the road that was Windows Vista 
didn't help that at all. And even today, in the summer of 2021, it's estimated that around 25 million PCs worldwide are still running on Windows XP, which only works out at around 1.2% of the market share, but that is actually more than Vista or Windows 8. And while I wouldn't want to run XP as my main operating system today, I've got to admit upon my testing here, it is still more usable than I imagined it would be today. And it is actually possible, if you really wanted to, to use XP as your daily driver in 2021, which really proves what longevity it's had. So all that remains to say is a very happy 20th birthday to Windows XP. And if you've got any memories of Windows XP you would like to share, I would love to hear a comment from you. And just a quick reminder that I do a weekly retro gaming and technology podcast with new episodes released every Friday and we bring you veterans of the industry on for an interview each week. And you can get new episodes from your favorite podcast client. Head to our website, theretrohour.com or ask your smart speaker to play the Retro Hour podcast. And while you're here on YouTube, here are another couple of my videos I think you might enjoy. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.